couple of the, the folks that are on this call um, could very well make anything happen. So uh, we're, we're really excited about that. Today, we're going to be talking all about uh, vRealize Operations, Log Insight, and specifically how this attaches to things like the vSphere Optimization Assessment. And we've had a few questions come trickling in through, uh, you know, through the Twitter sphere. And, uh, of course, the chat window is also open. I will be moderating that myself. And so what I'd like to do is just go ahead and introduce you, um, you know, to our panelists so you know who we've got here today. And so who we have here today uh, with us, um, first off, we've got Kyle Geisler. Uh, Kyle, if you could just uh, introduce yourself and sure. uh, let everybody know a little bit about you out there in TV land. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Uh, so hi, everybody in streaming land. I'm Kyle Geisler. I'm uh, a cloud management and software-defined data center specialist for our channel organization. So I help a lot of our solution provider partners build a practice around our software-defined data center uh, and I specialize specifically in our, our cloud management uh, platform. Uh, I'm also one of the few folks that helps run our VOA or vSphere Optimization and Assessment program uh, globally. So that's, that's why I'm pulled in as a subject matter expert there. Very, very cool, very cool, Kyle. Thank you very much, and and, and and I will you know kind of underline for the viewers that um, today we're not going to be getting into anything that is. Um, you know, if, if you would, you know, hidden or not public knowledge, right? Because this is, you know, internet based. And so, you know, if you do have questions that are outside or, or customer specific, you know, by all means, direct those back into me. And I'll be more than happy to connect, uh, you know, in, into, into Kyle and Bill and, and we can get into, you know, some real down and dirty stuff, you know, inside of the, the, the customer space. Um, with that, um, Bill, uh, we also have Bill Amaralt with us. Um, very, very pleased to have both Kyle and Bill. This is kind of a treat for, for Junior here. Um, so, uh, Bill, if you, uh, if you could introduce yourself as well, that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, my name is Bill Amaralt. I work in the uh, technical marketing uh, team here at the management business unit. So um, Kyle is, um, is one of my trusted advisors in the field, so he's, he's really with customers um, like Kevin is on a, on a daily basis, and I'm sort of back in the trenches working with the product management teams and so on. Um, I, I was in the field, so I do have that perspective, and I try to put that perspective in everything, everything I do. So a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the VOA content, the Feast for Optimization Assessment content, uh, was written with that in mind, so it was really designed to be kind of a, a tool for the SE, if you will, and for the partner to use uh, to try to expedite proof of concepts. And and you know that that kind of brings forth a, a, an interesting question. And well, let me put my my pers my perspective on it. Um, I think that that one of the downshots to the way people have been. Um, you know, perceiving or leveraging VOA is, you know, it's kind of been, you know, perceived as, you know, an end or a product or, you know, something that, that you're going to be a dropping. Tool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. A, 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 a tool. Um, as opposed to, you know, it being perceived as a process. A process. Exactly. So, Kyle, you seem to be pretty vocal on this topic. Um, you you want to you want to jump in there and, and tell you a little bit more. And, and by sure. the way, um, if you have a slide, you want me to throw up. Just uh, actually, that's a great point. Um, so, since we're going to kind of talk start, and I think we should start talking about kind of what VOA is and, and how it's evolved over the last year. Maybe let's start with slide nine in that uh, deck of slides that I sent you, because it's kind of a good um, you know big picture of what. Uh, kind of what the vSphere optimization assessment is. For those of you that don't know, um, <clears throat> what we did was we went back and we looked at how we as SEs and specialists at VMware sell vRealize operations or what um, some of you might know formally known as a vCenter operations manager or vCOPS. Um, the, way, the way we sell, it's anything, live. Anything can happen. Sorry, this is that. live TV, yeah. <laughs> um, the way we internally at VMware sell VR ops is, 
you know, demos are great and, you know, we've got lots of really interesting use cases we can show customers. But what's most meaningful and most impactful for our customers is when they see their own data with the power of our analytics applied to it, right? So what the VOA really is, is it's a way to put a program around what we saw as our best practice for selling VR ops, which is show it to your customer, get it in their environment, use their data and their problems and their issues and show them how to solve them with this tool. Um, and, and then, you know, from there, the opportunities, you know, really take off. And so we tried to put a program around that, tried to, you know, document best practice, make enablement materials available, um, and put some incentive behind it for, uh, for partners to get out there and use kind of the same process that we do internally to, uh, to get VR ops in our customers' hands. Hey, Bill, anything you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, I'll add just that, um, you know, if we go back a year and a half, close to two years now when this sort of concept kind of came up, it was trying to make do, doing a proof of concept with a very technical tool, a, very, a tool that takes quite a little, you know, quite a bit of time to learn for folks to learn really in and out, uh, but try to make it scalable from a proof of concept standpoint. So mm -hmm. allowing our partners to have, like you said, that sort of packaged offering but be able to do it quickly and efficiently. So that's kind of where we're, where we're always driving towards is try to make um, the whole process faster and more efficient. And, and when I was a, an SC manager, we would uh, our partners to have, like you said, to calculate the costs of, um, of an SE and uh, how much it costs them to do a, a proof of concept or the business, right, to support that. So, you know, an engineer can be anywhere from, you know, 600 to 2,000, right, what customers will pay. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we made the, m the most uh, efficient use of their time while, we were, while they were on site doing a proof of concept. Yeah, I mean, th those, those are all really excellent points. And a big shout out to Kyle for proving that we're, on, that we're streaming live. Um, Kyle brings the fun. That's what that's what his that's that's his role. In fact, people don't really know that we all have titles, but then we actually have like roles inside of VMware. You know, so <laughs> Kyle is, you know, he's a specialist, but you know, actual role is bringing the fun. Thanks, I appreciate that, Kevin. It, it, it means try. it means a lot coming coming from a, a, a nutball like me, right? You tell you the last seven days of the quarter like this, we need all the fun we can have. <laughs> right? There's a lot of stress and a lot of people focusing on the uh, on the big number, right? So yeah. it's. Yeah, exactly. So, well, at least we're having fun here for just a little while. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, that's a great point. And, and I think that, you know, when we look at it and, and, and uh, Kyle, I think you're really spot on when you said this is a process, not a, not even a product. Right. And, and, yeah. and I, I like to use the term. It is not, it, it is not an end. It is a means to one. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just, well, and you know, a lot, uh, sorry to interrupt you, no, but yeah. A lot of people think of it as like as a deal all by itself, right? Yeah. Um, talking about it in terms of go close of the sphere optimization assessment, right? But the the reality is, a VOA, um, if you use it the right way with your customer, it's a it's an opportunity for you as a partner to discover you know, not only VMware software opportunities but hardware opportunities from the various storage vendors you might represent or other software products and. And professional services, which everyone's looking for good opportunities for PS these days, um, you know, it's a way to get in there and add some value to your customer's environment with a tool that's best in class from VMware, but also just have a bigger conversation, not just about, you know, how many virtual machines do you have, are they right-sized, which all by itself has a ton of value, right? Yeah. But where are you on your journey to a software-defined data center? And what more... <clears throat> do you need what's your next actionable step to get closer to whatever your whatever your you know IT outcome might be whether it's automated service delivery or self service for your users or you know better operational efficiency or disaster recovery you know whatever those things might be that those business problems that IT needs to solve right this v, this VOA can be used by a partner as a way to kickstart that whole conversation and you know start <clears throat> Forgive me to get, get on getting a little salesy here, right? But start kind of going up the stack in margin and, and capability uh, and value, not just to your customer, but to you, the partner as well. I, I think that's really spot on. And I think that, you know, another, 
another point to kind of loop in there is, you know, you mentioned PSO and, you know, coming from professional services, I, I, you know, I can kind of speak to the importance of assessment, right? I mean, whether you're talking about, uh, I mean, for me, it was end user compute. And, you know, to this day, I still very firmly and vehemently believe, you know, I, I had somebody ask me a question. I was down in Tampa, Florida last week. And they said, what do I need to stand up a 50 user uh, desktop VDI environment? And I said, well, the first thing you need is an assessment. Um, and, and, and anybody who tells you you need this much hardware or that much hardware is just, they're just lying to you. <laughs> because no. it, you, you, you don't know. You don't know what the answer really is. Don't. And um, it depends on the use case. It depends on how you're going to use it. And so I, I think that you know, if we consider the fact that the vSphere optimization assessment is an assessment. And so once it's done, we're, there's going to be some really solid empirical data that can be funneled back in to, um, you know, into professional services when they're ready to kick off, uh, you know, uh, optimization and, and getting that environment tweaked and dialed in. Uh, Bill, any, any comments on, on that, on, you know, that, that kind of thought stream? Yeah, no, I think the uh, the other sort of side benefit and thing we were trying to drive towards a little bit was getting our our internal field more comfortable with going outside of the virtual infrastructure team, right? So starting to go talk to the operations team, starting to go talk to the security team, and VOA was kind of a catalyst to some of that because of the data that we were trying to capture in the report. Um, even if you think about you know pulling in logs, right? Log insight as as part of the uh, VOA that we. We sort of encourage, we don't, you know, fully um, integrate anything at this point, but uh, we certainly encourage folks to try to add that on and, and try to include it in the VOA. But it does get folks a little bit more comfortable going outside of that comfort zone of, you know, I'm talking to the admins that I know and I've known for years, right? Yeah. Well, one of the it, things yeah, go, that, go ahead, it, Kyle. It, Shoot. One of the things that's great about expanding that conversation is when you run a vSphere optimization assessment, I mean, you're... Yes, you're doing a mini proof of concept of VR ops, but yes, at the same time, you're also doing an assessment of the vSphere environment, right? And at the end, we, we can spit out a really valuable report that shows a lot of uh, areas of optimization in the vSphere environment, target virtual machines that need to be right-sized, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but at the bottom of that, there's a, there's a list, uh, well, there's a, there's a long list of all the virtual machines that are over and undersized, right? Um, capacity shortfalls and uh, waste and and performance uh, issues, right? Well, you can take those waste numbers and plug them into a real simple calculator that we've created, and you can have you can have you can go to the table with a dollar value, with with an actual tangible, close to real figure of what that waste is actually costing your customer in their environment. And it's never small. That's the, that's the really interesting part of it. No matter how small you think your customer's environment is, trust me, they've got a lot of waste. Um, I, I tell the sales reps that I work with, don't hesitate telling your customer that with VR ops, you'll find at least one host worth of capacity that you can reclaim. That is, a, that, that is a claim I've never been proven wrong on, regardless of the size of the customer's environment. So, you know, you can, you can use that in your dialogue with the customer if you're talking about a VOA, but then you can actually come back at the end and show that in real dollars of what all of that waste costs you in your environment. Nine times out of ten, you can use that to help justify the, the cost of the license or whatever the, the larger project at hand might be. Right, but it changes the conversation from "look at how cool analytics are and they're awesome" to "look at how much money I can save your business." Right, and that brings a whole different audience to the table. Yeah, and and I think that you know to to that point that kind of you know brings up a couple other a couple other ideas for me. And I, mean, I I had a conversation. I like to do this. Um, I, I give a little spiel. You know, every, every time I'm, I'm I'm live talking to people, and you know, people ask, you know, what's uh, you know, what do I get with ops? And I always tell them the story about my favorite car, my first car in high school, which was a 1973 Chevy Nova with a 307 V8 engine in it. Love that car. And, you know, th that car was perfect in every way except for the paint job, which I, you know, you know mowed lawns to rectify. Mm -hmm. it, 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 but it had two glaring problems. And those two glaring problems were, one, um, the speedometer busted, and two, the fuel gauge was inaccurate. 
And so what ended up happening was, you know, I, I didn't know how fast I was going and I had no idea, uh, you know, how far I could go on that tank of gas. I mean, and so I, I spent a lot of time, I spent a lot of time actually pushing that car, you know, into, you know, in, into local gas stations in and around Southern California in the eighties, which, you know, was bad time to be, you know, running out of gas. If anybody remembers the crisis back there, you know, and then, um, you know, the other thing was I had no idea how fast I was going and now and then I could attract the attention of the local constabulary and, um, you know, using the, the whole, you know, well, I was going along with the flow of traffic, you know, <laughs> right. doesn't exactly go very far. And, and I'd often find that, that, that paying the ticket would cost me more than, um, you know, just fixing the darn thing to begin with. And, and so I kind of come back to this, which is that really what people are doing with virtualization is they're applying a cure. They're applying a cure, they're injecting cure into their physical infrastructure because it's underutilized, it's not efficient, and all these things, and they're injecting, injecting cure. But they're not measuring that cure. They have no idea, you know, uh, they, could be sit, they could be riding in a Ferrari, but they're trying to drive it down a gravel road, you know, and they have no idea what that's doing to it, um, mm -hmm. or vice versa. They, you know, might be, you know, uh, running on six cylinders, but they're trying to hit the on ramp onto, you know, onto the 10 freeway at rush hour. You know, I mean, so ops is fantastic for giving that sort of insight. You know, it gives your car gauges and this is in, and the optimization assessment really, I think is, is, you know, we can almost consider it like, you know, Hey, uh, imagine every car out on the road being able to plug the most advanced computer system in there that will be able to tell every person that uses it, uh, you know, when they're going to next need servicing, how long they'll have on their tires, how long they'll you know, be able to use this oil, what, you know, when, what it's, what the car's going to be worth when they're ready to sell sure. it, everything. Okay. I mean, if, I love if, that analogy. Well, That's thank great. you. Thank you. Yeah. Collect them and trade them. But you know, I mean, if, if we're able to, to, if we had that kind of data and that's just about a car, man, Right, I mean, yeah. we're talking about hundreds. Here of thousands. we're talking about things that run our businesses. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, it, 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 it it almost make. Sometimes I think about this, and I look at especially really large environments where um, it's clear IT is doing their very best just to keep their head above water. Right, you got to ask yourself, aren't I mean, aren't you being a little irresponsible knowing that this tool exists and not using it in your environment? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm being a little inflammatory there, but at the end of the day, once you've used VR ops, and that, this is what it comes down to, right, about the VOA. Once you've used it as a customer and you see the information that it provides you and you see how it improves the quality of the decisions you make about your IT environment based on that information, it's, you can't live without it, right? Um, at, after that point. Yeah. Well, and, and speaking of living without it, um, one of the things that I heard a lot from, from people when, you know, I, I was kind of getting started with, with VOA, um, was they, they would drop it in and then they would fix something. It would right. say, you've got these oversized machines and then right. they would go in and tweak something. And I would have to tell them, don't do that. Um, can, can you guys kind of speak to, I see Bill grinning over there, uh, uh, B Bill, can you kind of speak to why don't you do that? And if you do that, then why will you not get your expected result? I want to know what Kyle did with this dog first. I let it, I let her in the office. <laughs> She'll just sit out the door there and bark. You, you, you know, you want to like lift up the dog and put the dog on camera. You know, you want to do that. <laughs> see, well, I tell you what, I, this she's is, 18 years old. This is happening. See? Yes. It's happening live. <laughs> she deserves. She deserves to be broadcasted. I got to be honest. She's not going to be with us much longer. So she she will now live in infamy on right. on, on on UStream and channel enablement. That's awesome. God, Great. I love VMware. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I mean, Bill. About not using it as kind of a, a specific tool to solve a specific problem. Well, kind of more to the point. Um, it, put it why, in, use it, pull it out. Well, or or right. put it in. Uh, you know, drop in VOA. Um, find something that's wrong. Remediate, 
And then why are you not going to get the expected result? Why do we not want people to remediate? Not just because we want them to leave what's wrong wrong, it's not about that, but there's like specific technical reasons why that remediation won't work and how that can kind of derail things uh, kind of longer term. Yeah, and you know, the beauty of, in the secret sauce in vRealize Operations Manager is the analytics, right? So that's the ability for it to learn expected behavior and do it over a longer period of time. So if you think about the, the cycles of a business, right, where they've got peak times, if, if they're retail, they may have peak times during specific seasons. That stuff takes a long time to play out, right? So there's, there's, there's peaks and, and valleys in that. And, and vRealize Operations Manager, the analytics uh, engine that, that, that um, you know, really, like I said, that secret sauce is, you know, an amazing tool if you let it, you know, sit and bake for a while and really learn your business. So I think having it in longer, you get much more impact over time than, you know, sort of going in there and looking for some quick, short, um, fixed opportunities. The other thing is, you know, VOA was designed to be a proof of concept uh, process, right? So using specific tools as part of that proof of concept process, vRealize Operations Manager is one of them. There's a, a bunch that are kind of in that suite that can also provide value. Um, so I don't think it's, it's sort of a go quick fix type of um, situation. It is more of a long-term play and, and really get the benefits over time and start incorporating some of the other efficiencies that come with it. Yeah, and, and I think to that, that point of dynamicism, um, you know, uh, Bill, this is, our, this is our first time on a call together, but Kyle is, is like, he's, he's well used to me at this point. He, he's, <laughs> he's, he, he's been indoctrinated into my lunacy. Um, or my mania, as I like to call it. But, uh, you know, I, I often use the analogy that one of the things, one of the key differentiators, at least in my perspective, when it comes to vRealize operations is that everything else out there is like a static fence, right? Um, you know, whatever you're talking about. And, you know, operations is like a movable fence, you know, you, you, you go and you bring a new puppy home, right? And, and you drop that puppy into a bit in, 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 into the backyard. You decide, hey, you know, I need, I need a fence for this dog. So now you got a fence for this dog and somebody's going to tell you, well, you need to be, you know, uh, this, this wide by this tall by this big cross and, and that's what you need for this dog. Okay, great. So you drop the puppy in and never knowing whether or not the puppy's actually using any of that fence. He might be staying in the same three square feet for the first two weeks of his life, but you have no scope or insight into it, but you just grossly overpaid for a fence, right? Right. You know, uh, whereas, you know, or you could undershoot that fence and that little sucker could be trying to dig out from the bottom of it just to get to, you know, just to get to his favorite, you know, spot in the yard. You know, and, and in which case you got a whole nother set of problems because you've got a bunch of false positives that are occurring all the time. Because Help me here, Kevin. Are you talking about right sizing? Right I am, sizing. I am the absolutely. Plans? I'm talking about okay. right sizing and dynamic uh, uh, modification of our, you know, constraints. Okay. You know, and and you know, so if we if we put it in the, the sense of you know dynamicism, we're able to kind of create a movable fence that will grow and shrink as that you know as as that new puppy needs it. You know, so that you know if there are anomalies. Um, you know, sure. we can align those anomalies and determine what are we okay with. And I, I got to say, as a professional who uses communication skills every day, the fence idea I don't like because it makes me think about boundaries. Uh, so I mean, not to pick you apart, like oh, on a recorded can, medium dude, or anything. You, you, but can, you can pick me I'm, apart all you want because I'm I don't. I don't like the story. boundary idea associated with that particular analogy because what I really what I think this does is it opens us up. Right. I mean, it gives us the ability to use every ounce of capacity, whether it's CPU or memory or disk I.O. or disk space. It lets us use every bit, every dime we've paid for that hardware. We can use it to its fullest potential. I will. So, agree, I will agree with you. I will agree with you right up until the point that, that we do have alerts and triggers. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying, well, an alert okay, and a trigger. Okay, there's a boundary there. I want to know how alerts and triggers go into the fence analogy. 
Well, sure. I mean, the dog, the, the, the dog runs the fence. The dog runs through the fence. That's an alert, man. You know, he, he digs hey, under. Hey, I think we've got a new business idea. Like, what if you could get texts every time the dog hit the fence and tried to dig under it? I think they it's actually, I think there is an app for that. It's like a thing you can put on their collar. Thanks. That's, it's a short that's, fence. Yeah, it's ex exactly, exactly. <laughs> Invisible fence, right? So, uh, so right sizing is what we're talking about yes. there. Right? Yes. And and the, the beauty of an analytics tool like Bill was saying is the longer, the bigger the data set mm -hmm. for us to analyze, the more accurate we are about what the right size is. Like we've all had that situation where that DBA swears up and down that he needs 16 cores and 32 gigs of RAM and his application just won't work if he doesn't have it, right? And, That's right. And you know, you, t you say, well, okay, sure, that's ungodly expensive. You know, we're going to have to pay so much money for all those cores and so on. Now, you as an admin, right, the IT organization as, as a whole has the tool to say, look, we gave you what you asked for. And for the last six months, this is how much of it you've used, right? We're not observing, you know, your design specification. We're observing your actual usage in the environment. And so, you know what? That's fine. If you get to a point when you need 16 cores, we'll give them back to you, but we're going we're gonna to drop you back down to one until you need those, right? You can now make those kinds of intelligent decisions. And I think IT still thinks that that sort of information is not easily accessible, right? But it is. Yeah, yep. no, it absolutely is. So, well, so I'll kind of spin that off and, 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 and into another question. Um, uh, so you know, as we're as we're looking at all these things and we're, we're making these adaptations and developing all of this right sizing, um, you know, obviously dropping in VR ops for the VOA. Um, I, I like to to try to clarify to people: you're not dropping in a VOA, right? Correct. You're you're, yep. you're dropping in vRealize ops, you know, mm -hmm. in order to complete the VOA to assess the customer's environment. Exactly. Right. Um, what what do you guys? Uh, so one of the questions I hear all the time is, what version or edition of operations is being dropped in? Well, you know, whichever one's appropriate for the customer's environment, right? If they've still got three X hosts and they're running a four dot V center, well, you know, you can still use five X VR ops, right? Because um, six won't work. But Bill and I let, let me let me rephrase. Not not which version, which edition. Oh, sorry. Yeah, advanced. Advanced. Bill? You yep. agree? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you why. Because um, the VOA is really whatever you want to make of it, right? And I have a lot of partners who will, on top of, you know, VR ops, they'll throw in maybe their own, um, their own you know, analysis tool or... Um, you know, maybe they're a strong storage partner and they also sell a lot of storage to this customer, they'll throw in our, our storage solution pack on top of it. In order to use things like solution packs and custom dashboards um, and some of the capacity analytics that you get out of VR Ops, you need the advanced edition. Standard is great and customers can do a lot of right sizing with standard, right? So if ultimately that's where a deal ends up at the end of a VOA, if it's VSOM, as an example, of vSphere with operations management, if that happens to be the license that comes out of a VOA, customers are still going to get a lot of value out of that. But we all we want to position it with, a, with the best foot forward, right? So uh, I think all the features you get with advanced are the way to go. And and one of one of the things, Bill? go ahead, Bill. No, I was just going to say I couldn't agree more because you've got a lot more flexibility at that point, right? Because when you go into a customer environment, there may be a set of sort of key criteria that you're going into address or to look at. Um, that's you know part of the, the original scoping, but oftentimes you know you'll you'll be in there and there, there's an audit going on, right? And right. you know people are scrambling to try to find information from these from the virtual infrastructure, from the physical infrastructure, from the OSs. Um, so you know you have to be able to sort of adapt to that. And um, you know I'm working on the our first SaaS offering with with uh, in regards to compliance, and it reminds me of kind of you know so many opportunities where I was doing a proof of concept and. Something else came up. A fire was going on, and you know, on another team, and then all of a sudden, it turned into something much bigger than what what I was originally doing there for the proof of concept. So, advanced gives you that flexibility. Well, and and you know, one of the things too, um, one uh, one partner I was talking to is was wanting to leverage advanced 
in order to create custom dashboards. So, so kind of the, the, the net idea was they wanted to do the VOA, but they wanted to uh, wrap their own IP around it. Okay. Um, so obviously the, the, the VOA represents VMware's, you know, kind of best guess and, and, and our experience on what, you know, our customers like to see, right? Um, however, customers, different geos, different, you know, uh, lines of business may want to see different things. Mm -hmm. And so this particular, you know, uh, partner came up with a very clever idea. They said, well, you know, we, you know, we're very, uh, I believe they, they were storage centric, right? And so they built a series of dashboards inside of their lab. Yeah. And then uh, I said, okay, well, because we wanted to cut down reporting time. So the idea was they built out the custom dashboards and then from those dashboards, uh, they just took the XML and right. they stuck it. it. Yep, they imported it into VR yeah. Ops when they when they loaded it up at the customer site. Then when it came time to do the reporting, they just pulled up their custom dashboard, and right. they had all of the screenshots they needed that were germane to that line of business. Um, are, are other partners doing that? Is, is that you know a good idea? You know, uh, is it a good practice? And then that's, that's a kind terrible of... idea, Kevin. Nobody <laughs> should ever do that. Oh well, okay. It's so, wonderful. So I'm, so I'm two for I'm, I'm over two today, then, right? No, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, you know, and some a lot of customers, you know, still think about the idea of you know monitoring and maintaining all of the individual pieces of infrastructure that that roll into their business critical applications um, and one of my partners does they'll make a business critical apps custom dashboard and they'll show them you know they'll have the one super metric for exchange or for SQL or SharePoint or whatever, right? And they'll build out that business critical apps dashboard. They did the same thing. And they'll import that into their customer environment. They'll say, look, now, Mr. CTO, you can monitor all of the things you care about uh, at the high level while, you know, while your staff works on uh, the details. And that, yet another one of those things, along with the, the ROI numbers, that really help bring uh, a different audience to the table for the conversation, right? Um, so I, I I love that idea. I think that's that's great. I wish more uh, I wish more of our partners felt more comfortable with the custom dashboards because you know you got to play with it. You got to learn it. It's not. I mean, it's easy, but it's not. Um, it's not super easy, right? I mean, yeah, it takes well, a little I mean, bit. It's, effort, it's, but once yeah, you do it, yeah, it's right, easy, but it's not necessarily super intuitive. Right. You do it once and. And that's it. Just like you said, you got an XML file that you can take to every single one of your customers. Hey, look, here's your business critical apps dashboard. Here's your storage dashboard. You know, and that's something. Heck, some of my custom, some of my partners even sell that as a professional service offering. Right, a couple hours of PS to build custom dashboards, and then you've got whatever you just built in your back pocket for the next customer. And it doesn't take any time. Right, so you know, I, I tell partners all the time. This is a huge platform to develop all sorts of other offerings for your customers. Yeah, that that, that makes great sense. Um, so that that takes me. You got to jump in here, Bill. I was going to say that I would I would add that you could say the same for the VOA reports, right? So those yeah. are just a couple of canned reports that we decided to sort of make available. But if you like half of the data and some of the things you don't want, it's just simple views, right? So you just go in there and just pull what you want, don't want out, modify the view to add what you do, and. You've got your own custom report that you can repeat at every customer uh, site that you go to. We got a slide in that deck, uh, Kevin, on reports. Uh, uh, which, uh, which number? 13. It's got a couple of screenshots from the different reports. Okay, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's up. Go ahead. Yeah. So what we've actually, as part of the process, um, you guys, there's a we should throw one of these slides up that actually has the link on it, but vmware.com slash go slash vSphere optimization is the URL that will take you to Partner Central where you can find all of these things. But um, we offer a couple of different kinds of reports. Bill just mentioned the ones that are built into the product. Um, they're, they're great um, and he put a lot of effort into you know some useful information and data there for your customer. But we've also got PowerPoint and Word templates that you can leverage to create an even more customized deliverable. Uh, for your customer, and you know you can pretty it up with you know screenshots from the actual widgets and dashboards within the product if you like. Uh, in fact, when we started the program last year, that was that was kind of all we had. We didn't have 
product generated reports, right? And the the product generated reports that we have now are direct feedback from our partner community saying, you know, this process is working for us, but we want the reports to be a little easier. So, you know, we built that and, and, and launched that for them. You know, it occurs to me, um, we're talking about we're talking about all the ways you can use it. Um, maybe at some point we should kind of talk about um, you know what a timeline for for the vSphere optimization assessment actually looks like, and I've got a slide in that deck about that too. What? Wow! How did how did I not see that one coming? Um, <laughs> yeah. What? what slide the, number twelve. Slide number twelve. Okay, give me just one tick here, and um, there you go. Yeah, go, go, go ahead and build it out because what we think of the what we think of the VOA is typically kind of thirty days is all the time you need. To spend, um, you can certainly do more. Uh, can't do much less, but you could you could you can shorten it a little bit. Uh, but the idea is, you know, have a real engaging conversation with your customer about their business needs right up front. Talk to them about the challenges and the problems in their IT environment, right? Um, and you can do that on site or over the phone while you're working with them to install VR ops. And then. Um, after the first week or so, you know, a lot of data is really mature. Um, you can have a decent conversation about the performance characteristics in the customer's environment. Certainly all the configuration information. Um, so we'll rec we recommend that halfway through, um, you sit down and talk to your customer with a demo in their environment, show them the you know, performance issues, kind of highlight uh, things they could do to change, uh, you know, changes they could make to improve those. Um, because overall, over the 30 days, you know, the data set is maturing. It's an analytics engine, after all, that needs more data to make intelligent assumptions. So before we can start talking about right-sizing, we got to see a little bit more of the, uh, uh, of the environment, right? But I say get engaged up front, stay engaged through the whole process by talking about what you can when you can. So day one you can talk about the configuration of their environment. Day 15 you can talk about the performance of their workloads. And on day 30 you can have a really meaningful conversation about capacity because we've seen enough to make fair assumptions. Now, obviously 60 days out the capacity information is going to be much more accurate. 90 days out, you know, even still. So, so 30 days is kind of the sweet spot on accelerating the sale but still spending enough time uh, you know, to have accurate data. It's one of the uh, one of the challenges we hear a lot coming back from the field is there's a lot of competitive products that are kind of in the same space but provide sort of results much quicker. And um, you know, that's kind of the catch twenty two when you have this right exactly. So the results, <laughs> the, the quality of the results is is kind of where we have to, we have to really sort of hold a, a firm position because you know the analytics are everything for us. So we can't just simply say. Well, we could simply say, here's a snapshot of what it looks like, but we don't feel confident in the accuracy of that data. So having the, um, you know, the ability to run that over time and, and show accurate results in a 30-day period has been um, widely accepted. So, But you do run into that every once in a while. I have some partners that do these over 60 days, right? Because they do them with so many customers that they just, you know, the follow-up for 30 days isn't feasible for them, and that, you know, that sort of thing. They want more analytics. The, the those are the same guys that put the storage packs in and those kind of things, right? You can make a VOA whatever you want. That's the that's the beauty of this is we're not going to hold you to doing one thing or another, right? All we really want you to do is show your customer something that's going to really add a lot of value to their environment. It's going to add value to your relationship with them. Um, well, cause, I mean, really, net net, somebody could go out and they could uh, they could just drop in a, a, a vRealize Ops sixty day trial into their customer's environment and pull up a bunch of information, and they could ham fist it, and they could call it, you know, uh, whatever they want. It's still the the the, the core bones of the VOA. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. you know back back to your point. I mean you know that's it's just a process you know and and so you know to that point um, you know other common questions that, that come up a lot inside of this space are you know what are the most common technical issues or gotchas? Uh, I remember an old one used to be when uh, you know b before version six of the Realize Ops. It was the um, uh, the DRS trigger, 
mm. right? Uh, you know, in, inside of the infrastructure, you know, so you'd, you'd have to, you know, take out a hose, drop it onto a, you know, a single host, you know, otherwise, yeah. you know, DRS would trip you up. Right. And, and there, there was that whole thing. So I, I'd like to, to know from you guys, since, you know, we're probably going to have some engineers watching this, um, you know, inside of, of six, so let's just, I, I guess let's just frame it with six for now. Cause we've, you know, sure. dealt with enough stuff. That's what we're doing going yeah. forward. What would you consider the biggest technical issues, gotchas, snafus, and snares that will, you know, or if any, and, you know, how would you, you know, optimize or streamline the implementation, things that you steer away from? Uh, you don't like, you know, you don't uh, see it being very it's, successful it's doing it remotely or, um, you know, it just, you know, how, how do we, uh, how do we attack or approach that? Uh, so I'll, I'll jump in real quick and say policies is probably the number one thing that we hear coming from the field because, you know, customers have different levels of comfort with, um, you know, their provisioning, their over provisioning. Some of it's, you know, intentional, right? Some of it's there because they don't want to get caught shorthanded. Um, so you have to sort of adjust the policies to allow uh, flexibility between customers because the tolerance level is different, right? So that's probably the number one thing I hear back from the field is we need a little more guidance on this. They're not as intuitive as we would like. Um, so we do have the material, right? So we've got videos now that support this. We've got PowerPoints. We've got documentation that support the policies. And in parallel, our product management teams are working feverishly to sort of try to simplify that. And what they've done with policies in 6.x um, was to try to make them as generic as possible. Right, so th there's no way we could sort of do a one size fits all with the with the default setting. So there is sort of this general, um, uh, you know, sort of level of acceptance that uh, that you know we have to sort of build into it. So that's kind of where we're at today. But but policies is is by far the biggest thing I hear. I got two other points, but I'm going to stay on policies for a second because you're absolutely right because that that's crucial. <clears throat> and the an analytics engine. Yeah, how, uh, talk, I'm just talking to the engineers out there who've deployed VCOPS in the past, right? How many times have you gone back to the customer and they say, well, that time remaining number is BS, right? I've, I've got plenty of room, but it says I'm over provisioned by 400 VMs or whatever, right? That conversation is, is, is exactly what we're talking about here. Not that the analytics are wrong, because the analytics are not wrong. The analytics are always right. The policies define the base assumptions that are used to calculate the analytics and that's those assumptions can be incorrect based on the customer's um, uh, you know willingness to over provision uh, you know willingness to under provision all, all of those kinds of things right <clears throat> the policy conversation talking about the rules you use to define the way capacity is analyzed in the VR ops environment the conversation with the customer about changing those policies, right? Defining the correct ones, talking about the applications. Do these apps run at night? Do these run during the day? Should we exclude time windows? You know, all of that, right? Having that conversation does something kind of fundamentally different in the sales cycle. It changes the customer's perception of you, right? All of a sudden, you're not coming in there shoving a tool in their face. You're talking to them about <clears throat> excuse me, the way their business runs and, and, and you're getting to the root of the way they allocate and provision resources in their environment, which sometimes they don't really have a whole lot of clarity around. So, so, so talking about, you know, maybe we should create a custom group for this set of virtual machines that host this one application so that we can apply a different policy to it. All of a sudden, when you start talking about that with the customer, you're having a conversation about, about what's important to their business, not what boxes you check in a tool, right? And so it's a, it's a fantastic um, tool <laughs> to use in the sales cycle, that conversation, you know, is what I mean. Um, <clears throat> it's a great way to, uh, to to change the perception of you with your customer, right? Um, and, and and I'll say this: policies and the wizard at the beginning of six much much easier, and I think a uh, much safer for a broader audience as far as using the default policies go. The VOAs I've done with customers and partners now that we're on six versus five x, um, leaving the default policies out of the box has been a, a lot more acceptable 
whereas in the past it, it wasn't. So I think just the fact that we've got a simple wizard that we can step through to you know talk to the customer about those those important questions has made a huge improvement. So thumbs up to you guys back in product development. Uh, <laughs> Whoever's watching. Right. <laughs> and you know what I would say? Um, I don't know if you want to talk about policies anymore, but... Go for um, it. So uh, we've got... Uh, one of the things that Bill's team did, uh, and thank you guys for this, was you guys worked really hard to um, sanitize and publish all of the enablement content that our own internal SEs use for VR ops. So we have a process internally that we call accreditation, where uh, everyone that has SE in their title or specialist at VMware kind of has to prove that they're good at demoing VR ops and you know gets accredited on the content uh, of the product. Right, all of that training material has been made partner facing. So if you guys feel like you don't know everything you could about VR ops and you have the initiative, uh, you can go out to a partner university and sign up for that training path. It's all, it's free, there's not a, you don't have to pay for it, and there's hours of content that'll make you a level 200 or 300 expert on VR ops, just like any one of our SEs internally. So um, that was something that I, I'm, I'm really glad that we've done for our partners. We've actually made a cultural shift internally that uh, we don't develop anything for internal only. Everything is developed for partners and SEs, right? So an SE is an, ex a partner is an extension of our SE and sales teams, so we treat it as such now. So hopefully that's reflected in the materials. No, those, those, are, those are great points, and I know that from a, an enablement perspective, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I try to do all I can to you know, carry forward the same idea of uh, you know, technical assessments inside of the partners and then you know, moving toward and, and using predictable and, and replicable you know, collateral. Um, you know, in, inside of that space, and I think that's really important. So, so, Bill, beyond just uh, beyond policies, any you know, any, any technical snafus or, or best practices, things that uh, you know are kind of hidden in the the back pages of tech marketing docs that that, that you wish people would read more. <laughs> um, not necessarily. There, there, you know, it's some it's it's almost you know, it's sometimes you feel like you make too much content. Um, and then it just is out there, but you don't know if it's really being consumed and how effective it is. So that's one of the challenges we face is what's the most effective enablement method or methods out there. And, and, and every consumer is different. Some people say, I just, you know, just send me the doc or some people just want the videos um, and others, you know, want the hands-on hands -on training type of thing. So um, it's it's difficult for us to sort of, you know, you, you, you try to do the most you can, right? So we do the blogs, we do the um, the video series, we do the um, you know enablement programs internally. So we put them as part of the partner enablement programs and and uh, through our disties to do our enablement. But th there's a lot of uh, of methods to get it out there. <laughs> well, I, I got something to add to that to that question, Kevin. Um, one thing that I think trips a lot of folks up. Is in the beginning when you're installing VR ops, and I'm getting a little technical here, so pay attention for those that are looking for it, uh, and tune out for those that aren't. Um, there's a checkbox uh, about I don't remember the exact wording, but it says uh, you know storage and network I/O. Do you want to include storage and network I/O in your analytics? Unless you've got a really good reason, my recommendation would be don't. Right, turn leave those unchecked because those get really noisy. So it takes, remember, analytics engine, big data set equals better analysis. Uh, small data set equals worse analysis. So things, things like storage I.O. and network I.O., we don't have complete line of sight all the way down to you know what HBA you're using, what NICs you've got, how much actual bandwidth is there. So all we can do, we the tool, is observe maximum and minimum values. So uh, and when you, if you have storage and network IOs turned on by default or collecting that data from the very beginning, it gets real noisy and it can create lots of questions from your customer that, um, you know, fa false data, I guess. Uh, you really need six weeks or more of data collection to, to see the, the business cycles 
that are appropriate right, to use network I.O. So unless there's a really good reason and you're specifically trying to do something um, you know, around the storage I.O. or network I.O., I'd say turn those things off because it'll, it'll declutter the conversation with the customer. You can stay focused on capacity and performance in terms of the virtual machines, um, and you might not get distracted by... Uh, by false positives in the, in the I/O data, it'd, b- it'd probably be the biggest. Because now that we're on six, right? There, you're right about DRS in five X. For those that don't know, right? Five X was a V app. It was two VMs, and so you, DRS had to be enabled in a cluster in order for it to be supported. So it did create an issue when you wanted to do a VOA for customers that didn't have DRS installed. So fortunately, now that we only have one VM. In VR ops, that that goes away. So does the requirement for network pools, right? Oh, network yeah, the, the the IP pools, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So it's I mean it's literally I, I tell partners and customers it takes longer to download VR ops than it does to install it and get it running. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I've I've you know dropped it into my labs and stuff here. It's it's probably probably just about the simplest thing. Um, you know, one question that comes up with ops all the time. Um, <laughs> Are inside, uh, you know, on on the 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 the, the core summary page. Um, there, there's now uh, some some fields that uh, stay blank for for a long time over inside of uh, uh, risk and efficiency, right? Where you, you used to have, you know, like all of these, um, you know, like major like sub metrics that sub were coming. Badges, in. Yeah. yeah, all the sub badges. And so now that's that's not there anymore, and and I've I've had to you know kind of walk people through it. Bill, Bill could you kind of talk a, about that that change a little bit, and you know kind of what to expect? Uh, actually, I'm going to let Kyle do that because he's he's more hands on on a day to day with the product. Sure, shoot, Kyle. Well, yeah. So you're talking about um, for the the sub badges, right? The mind badges. So they all still exist, right? Um, but it was a little bit of information overload to customers and partners to have it all just right there on the front page, right? Um, so what we've done is we've moved uh, the, all the minor badges um, into the analysis view. I don't know if you've got a demo environment open or anything, Kevin, if you wanted to show that. Yeah, actually, I don't. Um, you know, as I, well, I, I think I mentioned to you I'm in the, the process or the throes of trying to get ready to move. And so, that's right. Coming to Austin, yeah. So for, I, I've I've kind of started tearing some stuff down. So so at the okay, moment, I fair don't. enough. Uh, well, so anybody who wants to see this, you know, feel free to reach out to us. I'll show it to you. But essentially, under the analysis tab, all of our minor badges are there now. So um, the the sort of main homepage for VR Ops is what we call the recommendations. Uh, view. And this starts with the major badges, health, risk, and efficiency, and then alerts associated with that. Because in six, we've, we've really amped up um, our alerts. And, I mean, these are truly meaningful root cause defining alerts, right? You'll, you'll get an alert. Um, let's see, wait a minute. Maybe I put a slide in that deck. Did I? Did I? No, nope. sorry. Uh, but you'll, I almost did. Uh, you'll you'll see something that says like um, um, CPU is a constrained resource on this virtual machine. You know, uncharacteristic performance level. Uh, you know, uh, cause is too few CPUs. Click here to add a CPU. Right? You like you'll see all the way down to root cause, and then a button to click to change it, which is a huge shift from what it was. In the last version, right? Yeah. So the whole remediation thing, and I, and I think that brings up a good uh, uh, technical point, which is uh, that's not enabled by default out of the box. Um, you have to install the Python adapter to make that work. Um, it's it's not a big deal. Um, it, you know, you just have to go in, drop it in. But I think the only thing that is uh, tricky about it are the settings. At least what I found, uh, I guess, count, uh, not totally intuitive. Um, were the settings for the Python adapter, um, you, you know, like you know how to point it, uh, you know, to to the uh, you know the target systems, right? Um, you know, there was a, a a little bit of um, a little bit of stuff around there, but I know there's some great documentation on it. And there's a, there's a couple videos that cover that section of the install, 
Um, so, you know, the YouTube's got them, VMware TV's got them uh, on YouTube as well. So uh, if anybody's having trouble, go take a look at those. All right, cool. And I'll be sure I'm to... kind of jumping those. all over the place, but I want to quickly plug the tech marketing videos that you guys have done, Bill, because, oh my <laughs> gosh, they're just amazing. Um, the, you guys have spent a lot of time putting together short little videos about all these different features and topics, and um, I, I know my partners are finding it really, really useful. Uh, to, to have that sort of instant access to, to see it, somebody doing it for them. I, 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 heck, I'm, I'm enjoying it too. It's really useful for me. Oh, I, I watch them all the time. And, and Bill, was it, was it also, uh, the, I mean, I think, it, I think it's the same guys that also have, and this is one of my cool, one of my favorite like hidden things about Six it, are all of the little videos that are embedded on all of the pages. And the health? Yeah, I had yeah. to call somebody's attention to it. They were like, "Well, I don't know, you know, what's going to happen when I get off the phone with you?" I'm like, "No, you're good." I said, "You've got smarter people than I do at the tip of a mouse right now. All, <laughs> you know, all, all you have to do is just click that video, and they're going to explain exactly what you're looking at and what to do with it." Yeah, I mean, the help is we want it to be fully video supported, context driven. So wherever you are, the video is specific to that particular topic or that section of inside the product UI. And that was one of the coolest things. I just, uh, you know, ma major hats off and kudos. That that was like a brilliant idea. I think everything should do that. So, right. Kevin, that um, the um, one of the files that I sent you earlier actually has a, a, uh, an Excel sheet yeah. in it, and in that Excel file is a link to the YouTube post of every single one of those videos. Yeah, I actually have that. I will I will get that out there. And uh, We've got it on the VOA landing page, vmware.com slash go slash uh, vSphere optimization. Um, so that, that Excel file is out there. Um, so, you know, partners the, that want to access that and, you know, leverage it, please do. Well, you know, but that would also be... basically a, it, table of contents of every video. That would also that be a great thing, thing to, to throw, throw out throw there on, uh, on the Twitter sphere. Well, let me go ahead and tweet that then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead and tweet that bad boy out. Um, so, you know, we talked about some technical issues and fixes and things like that, and we're, we're kind of, you know, running... Uh, close to our time, I allotted 90 minutes, but we don't have to use all that. I just wanted to make sure that we could run over if we wanted. Um, so, uh, some report, any reporting tricks? I mean, we talked about some best practices. We talked about the use of, you know, your own custom XML and all of those. Uh, Kyle, you and I have spoken in the past about, uh, you know, doing PowerPoint versus PDF and, and all these sorts yeah. of things. And really, the key is in the readout. Um, yep. With any assessment, key is in the readout. So, any well, tips? Any tips for the readout to, to to make it really shine, really sparkle? Let me come right back to that because I think um, I think the key to a VOA, yes, the data, com, the, you know the the results conversation is very important. But remember, what we're talking about here is a mini proof of concept of VR ops, and so I really feel strongly that what's important for every one of the SEs that does this to do for a customer is a, is a meaningful demo in the customer's environment, right? Really show them how to use it and get them to, right? Encourage them, get them excited about something. I know what's easy for me when I was an SE demoing VR ops and, well, VCOPs at the time, six times a day to my customers, right, was jumping in on a WebEx into their environment and finding a database performance problem and root causing it right in front of them on the phone in five minutes, right? Here, that, uh, these three VMs are causing excessive IOs on that data store, which is the same one that your database is on. Like, I mean, if you can show a customer that kind of connect the dots, that, you know, Seriously, that guy will bug the crap out of his boss until he buys it. Well, and, right? and, and that's what it's yeah. about, right? I mean, I, 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 IT doesn't yeah. spend their time fixing problems. They spend their time finding problems. I love that. Yeah. You know. that's, at least that's where we want them to, to get, right? Yeah. Well, in an ideal world. You know, well, I, I, mean, say, I say that's the beauty of this, right? You reduce the amount of time you spend finding and fixing problems, yeah. and you can go back to contributing something valuable to the business, right? Yeah. For like, well, how great would it be to actually have some time during the week when you're not fighting a fire and you're working <laughs> on that cool thing that you thought about six months ago, right? Well, not to mention just being able to sleep at night, <laughs> you know, without yourself. Without the phone going off. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, cause we, we've all we've all been there. The phone going off, you know, uh, you know, at one in the morning while you're, you know, uh, out at a friend's party, and you're like, I, I have to go. Doesn't. I have to go try to go figure this out now. Even when it doesn't, and you're just dreading that on call week, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I I remember we there were four guys in my shop. We had a four week or once a month. We, somebody was on call, right? And I just hated that week, yeah. but you know. If we had this, those were back in the ESX like two dot X days. Yeah, there weren't any analytics for vSphere at the time. But yeah, I mean, my, if we, my, mine were the three dot three dot uh, X days. So I was yeah. right behind you. But um, I want to go back to your first question because it was very important. Yes. What can we do about the readout? Mm -hmm. um, I'm an in your face kind of guy, and so I say slide number one needs to be how many dollars you're wasting. Right, put that dollar that dollar value in seventy two point font right on the first slide and say you're wasting seventy thousand dollars worth of resources that you've already spent. You want to get somebody's attention. There's slide number one. Right um, now, maybe you don't want to be so in your face. That's fine, but follow that up with you know a list of your top candidates for optimization. You know these are your biggest waste objects in your environment. These VMs and don't be afraid to call it out. I and mean, people will take it personally, right? But that's going to come that that DBA who insists on those 16 cores and 32 gigs of RAM, he's going to be at the top of that list, right? Um, and if you're having the if you got the right people in the room for that conversation, it's not about hey IT, why are you wasting resources? It's about hey application owners, why are you insisting on things that you don't need, right? And if you have the right people and the right audience in the room, it just it changes everything about how ITs proceed. Well, and, and I think I'd like to underline the fact that, because that conversation, I, I think it would be easy to construe that comment or that conversation as something strategic about the uh, vSphere optimization assessment or vRealize ops. And it's not, okay? This is, this is, this is kind of you know, uh, and and I say that especially given the fact that you know this is this is a public facing video and all sorts of things like that too, right? Um, that that's kind of like IT good practice, you know, uh, you know, two hundred one, three hundred one is you know identifying points of uh, you know concern and and, and waste, waste and addressing them you know effectively, and you know you can't optimize until you've trimmed the fat, sort of a thing, right? And so. You know, when when Kyle's addressing it that way, um, you know he's spot on for one, and, and and I couldn't agree more. And I think that that this also kind of alludes to the fact that you know the adoption of optim of operations, V Realize Ops, and and the VOA as as part of that process, is kind of part and parcel to a healthier uh, IT uh, practice diet as a whole. It, it will yeah. really address the way IT is is pointing themselves at things and not just, um, you know, kind of take, you know, gra catching every ball they can. No, yeah. Or reacting, right. Yes. Everybody wants to talk about getting out of a reactive mode, right. And stop reacting and start responding. And the uh, reality yeah. is the virtualization, the infrastructure grew so fast, right. And it was so easy to spin up VMs and to, you know, to, to over provision was almost inevitable, right. So, you know, having, you know, now having sort of the stable infrastructure, let's take a much more comprehensive look at it. Let's make it more efficient. You know, use the data, like Kyle said, the ROI calculator is great. I know a lot of people don't trust the results of ROI calculators. Uh, they are based off of, you know, standard sort of um, pricing, but certainly use your own, plug your own values in. Cut it in half, I tell people, right? Because right. the number is yeah. going to a couple hundred thousand in most cases you go into, right? Or, or close to that. Oh, you don't believe that? Fine. Half. Exactly. Half. Right. right. <laughs> and it's, it's still, still a significant amount generally. Right. Yep. Well, I think that's one of the things I love about pretty much all of the approaches that VMware takes to things. And one of the reasons I, I, I you know, came here, and I think a lot of the reason that maybe a lot of us are here, is that you know, my, I remember my, my grandfather used to say that liars can figure figures don't lie. Right. And I used to love that. Um, and, you know, basically the, the idea was, you know, you can kind of re-swizzle numbers to mean anything you want. But at the end of the day, they mean what they mean. Um, and, you know, a lot of the approach inside of operations, inside of our assessments, inside of a lot of the approaches that VMware takes 
it, it's not secret sauce. The secret sauce is the fact that we're bringing forth sound logic and, and enabling, you know, uh, IT administrators to, to, to capitalize on that. You know, sure. it's, it's, we're not, you know, plugging two numbers that never belong together. These were numbers that belong together for, for years. It's just that nobody well, ever, ever made those attachments. We're correlating two data yes. points that have always been linked, but you've never been able to see them together. Okay, right? that's, a, that's a much more pretty way to say what I said. Thank you. That's, that's what I do is I say things pretty. I got a lot of $10 words over here. But, <laughs> but the, no, uh, but seriously, right? I mean, there's not a sing, there, there's very few individual pieces of data in VR ops that you couldn't go find in vCenter, right? And that's why I hate saying, you know, VR ops is management for vSphere. If it's not, right? If vCenter is management. VR ops is performance and capacity analytics for vSphere, right? And the, those data points, while they might exist in vCenter, they're not trended, they're not analyzed, not forecasted, not correlated. Yeah. You're not forecasting anything exactly. And that's what VR ops does for you, right? It takes all of that disparate data. I mean, there's tens of thousands of metrics that vCenter creates every day and then trashes, right? And that's what ops does is it saves it, analyzes it, presents it in a useful way. Well, I mean, you you can determine how much gas is left in the tank by um, you know by watching it drip out of the, the the fuel line, but it's much easier to have a gauge that works by knowing how many miles you've driven, right? <laughs> knowing how many gallons you put in there, right? Yeah, it's a lot easier to. There's there's one other thing I want to say, and it's almost just as a reminder. Um, a lot of people go in with the sort of rip and replace mentality, right? We're gonna force, we're gonna wedge this product in. Um, VR ops is should be the complete opposite conversation, right? It should be, let's complement all the existing investments you've made in other management tools and other, you know, components within the infrastructure and feed those through the analytics engine that VR Ops has. And you'll get a lot more bang for your buck out of those agents that are out there collecting data, you know, uh, in other infrastructure yeah, tools. Yeah. Than Name a few. Uh, you're already using open source Hyperic. Uh, you've got Nagios in place already. Maybe you're using SCOM from Microsoft, right? All of those can be third-party data collectors uh, yep. for, for VR ops and can pull data in and analyze it with our patent and analytics. So you're absolutely right. It's a complementary conversation that can add more value to what they're already doing. Yep. Love it. And, and, I, and I think that, uh, you know, just to, just to kind of remind all, all the viewers too, that, you know, it, once you get into advanced, um, you're going to be, you know, dealing with the, the capability to, you know, start talking about hardening. So you can talk about host hardening as, as a measure of compliance, especially if you're looking at things like PC, uh, PCI, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then we get into advanced. Um, we're, we're seeing the capacity to now build you know, correlation and you know, forecasting and identification not only around hardening at the host layer, but then outward into you know, those those external data points through API integrations, and also into the actual application stack with you know the integration of Hyperic, and being able to see how that data is moving around. And yep. so I think you know even inside of the compliance space, um, if people say, hey, you know my real concerns are around compliance. I don't really care about how much virtual machinery I'm running. It's still a great case for v the vSphere optimization assessment, so that oh, they can sure. see you know what this tool is going to do and what it's capable of doing long term. Well, the number one chain, number one uh, cause of downtime is change, right? We all know that it's a, it's you know it's it's a given. Um, so having visibility into what changes, right, and how that impacts your risk in VR ops, those are directly correlated. And you know, the more control you have over that, the less town time you're going to have. It's, it's as simple as that. And if not, you've got the audit trail to find out why it happened, when it happened, potentially who made it happen. Because a lot of that, if it's done through a B center, is tracked as well. So, mm -hmm. and don't forget, if you're mentioning compliance, that it's not just about like vSphere hardening or compliance with a big C, right? Our compliance tools let customers build their own IT policies as compliance packs. Let's see, pull in uh, compliance best practice packs from Cisco and Microsoft. And, or you know, just tribal knowledge. They, they can yeah, do it that way too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. De define their own policy packs based on their own IT pol corporate policies, right? Uh, I, I mentioned I'm working on that SaaS offering and mm -hmm. compliance and, you know, 
as I go through it, right, it's, it's sort of reminding me of a lot of things that I used to do in the field. But, you know, just having that, having that technical control to that level is impossible without automation. You can't do it, right? You can't get to that registry and file system level. You can't get to that infrastructure level without having some sort of automation to do it. So it's, it's a big part of the conversation. If it's not, it should be. Well, you know, I want to maybe before we wrap up, Kevin, it feels like we're winding down. I want to talk about a couple of VOA success stories Sure. Uh, that we've had. And I gosh, should have put a few good slides in here on this. I guess I didn't. But, um, well, I, uh, you know, take that back. Um, could you put slide number uh, 10 on the screen? So we've been running vSphere optimization assessments for uh, since the beginning of 2014. And um, I just want to call out kind of some of the highlights we've been doing in all of our regions. This is a this is you know for years a best practice within VMware, and now we've taken it out to our partner communities. We had huge success in 2014 with um, you know uh, for our partner com community not only um, closing more deals, which is what the VOAs have have helped us do, but also increasing the deal size of the VOAs uh, of the of the management opportunities that that existed, right? Um, the average VOA closed three times bigger than the average VSOM deal, right? So uh, I should say the deal coming out of a VOA um, closed three times bigger than the average VSOM deal. So this is absolutely a proven methodology, right? Um, and a few of the outliers uh, from these metrics, you know, I've got uh, partners that weekly are telling me about the professional services opportunities that they uncovered, uh, the storage and hardware deals that they uncovered. I mean, that's stuff we never even see out there selling with our partners, right? I mean, we're always just talking about the software license. But um, it, this is having big drag associated with hardware, software, and professional services. Uh, one of our... Uh, one of our partners um, here in Texas uh, just closed a almost three million dollar V Realize Suite deal that started from a simple VOA. And this um, this guy uh, actually has a habit of installing VR ops in every customer that he uh, that he works with, whether they you know want an assessment or not. Uh, he finds it more useful to have it running in their environment during the time where he's you know, actively talking to them about their environment. So he'll go out there and spend an hour and just drop it in with every customer. Sometimes he told me sometimes he doesn't even tell them uh, that he's putting it in their environment, right? Because that data is so useful to the work he does. Um, anyway, that customer, uh, you know, ha they were what he found while he was doing the the, the vSphere optimization assessment was that they were basically a two guy IT shop managing more than 2,000 virtual machines. And, you know, what he positioned to them at the end of the VOA was an upgrade because they were coming to the, um, they were coming up on renewal time. He positioned an upgrade for vSphere with operations management, which is a, you know, great VMware product to position at the end of a VOA. Um, and they hadn't budgeted for it and they didn't quite see the value for their environment, even though there was, you know, lots of right sizing opportunity and that sort of thing. They, they didn't bite, basically. Um, they went ahead and, and upgraded, uh, did their you know, naked renewal. Uh, a couple weeks later, he came back to them and said, you know, while we were talking about all this, I found out that it was two of you managing 2,000 VMs, and, well, you guys could really stand a little bit of automation. How would you like it if I showed you vRealize Automation? And then he showed them ITBM. You know, these are all the products in the vRealize suite, right? And it sort of snowballed. This, this little vSphere optimization assessment for a company here in, in Dallas, and they, um, well, it's a nationwide company. Anyway, point is, it was started small. They even said no. And he went back a few weeks later with the data he learned, and, and in less than six months, he and the enterprise team closed a $3 million ELA around the realized suite. And on top of that, he got $200,000 worth of professional services straight to his company, that not, you know, on their paper. So it's it's one of those things where there's it's an anecdote sure and it's an outlier, yes, but it can happen if you use this the right way, 
right? You can start having more meaningful conversations. And you know what? Maybe ops management wasn't quite enough. They needed to hear the whole story. They needed the whole software to find data center pitch. And they bought big on it instead of small. And that can come out of one of these. So, uh, you know, I would say it's just a great way to engage with every one of your customers that's using VMware. If they're not buying VMware from you today, they're buying it from somebody else. This is a great way to get yourself back in that conversation, you know, and offering more value to the customer. Absolutely. And, and regardless of whether or not that's the focal point of the conversation, operations um, brings value. You know, what, oh. even, even if you're just going to use it to, just to have the data Mm -hmm. uh, that allows you to, to better tailor, you know, the to decide how much yeah. storage you need to sell. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, with that, um, what I'm going to do, I mean, Kyle, I know you've, you, you've got, uh, you know, a couple more slides. If, if there's anything you'd like to touch on, that's cool. Um, Bill, um, any, any, you know, kind of, kind of final words for the community. I mean, we've touched on so much and, and, I'd like to just first say thank you both to to to, to you guys. Um, like I said, this is a very new and, and very different modality. Um, I, I think you can both agree this is very much unlike anything you've done from an enablement perspective. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's a curious idea, and there's been a lot of people that have, have been liking it, and and hopefully it allows us to have a little more fun and just get get out some uh, some good content. Um, without having to, you know, be so, you know, shackled to, you know, old ideas of how we talk. PowerPoint and WebEx. Yes, PowerPoint <laughs> whipping and a conference bridge. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm not a fan, um, but but I have a lot. More no, I love this. this. I think it's great. Yeah, it is. So, um, did you know, we it, did we get any questions come in on social media? So, you know, I, what I did was I had put out the um, the hashtags in advance. And so a lot, some of the questions that I was asking you were things that, that already came, come in. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think that's a really cool modality and way for us to put yeah. it. Bill, I think I was talking to you about that, you know, before is, you know, and then this is something, you know, kind of per event, we'll be able to, you know, uh, look back and, and see what feedback was and, and everything kind of directly from the field. And, and so I think that there's a lot of value in that. You know? Plus it allows people to hide, to hide behind their Twitter handle. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so cool. I mean, you know, those, those were a lot of the questions that I have, a lot of the things that I get all the time. And, um, you know, unless you guys have some others, you know, I'll, I'll let you go. But, you know, like I said, I, I definitely wanted to, to thank you very, very much for participating. And I look forward to doing this again. And, you know, as this, uh, you know, as this, you know, uh, method and, and modality builds out. Happy, happy to support it, Kevin. I'm glad you put this together. It's a, it's a, I think it's going to be a very successful um, enablement venue. All right, fantastic, Bill. Thank and you. I would say thanks again for having me, and uh, to all of your partners out there, feel free to reach out. I'm at Kyle Geisler on Twitter and Geisler K at VMware.com. If you've got anything, um, here to help. All right, and, and I'll also plug the uh, VOA support at VMware.com. So for anybody that has questions, issues. That's one of many channels, but they can certainly get a direct email into the right team if they use that. So VOA support at, VO, at VMware.com. Hey, maybe you should end the uh, recording with slide number nine since it has a link to the Partner Central landing page, VMware.com slash go slash vSphere optimization. All right, I am doing that right now. And awesome. uh, yeah, there it is, you know, right down there at the, at the bottom. That is, uh, I'm hovering my... My mouse over right now, vmware.com slash go slash vm vSphere optimization. Okay, that's fantastic. Guys, thank you again so very much. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Enjoy the end of the quarter. Thank you for joining me for a little playtime in Mania today. And we'll be doing this again very, very soon. And Kyle, I'll be catching you when I, uh, when I hit town in Austin. Uh, there will be pizza and a U-Haul waiting for you. Hey, that's fantastic. <laughs> If it's when if it's Wednesday night, we'll go down to Chicken Bingo and uh, have some fun and a few beers. That sounds like that sounds like a plan. Take good awesome. care, gentlemen, and have a fantastic week. All the best. See you Thanks, guys. guys. Take care. <laughs>